We're not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. Today, Joe Biden took a page out of Donald Trump's playbook and called it to his favorite cable TV news show to reiterate his plans to stay in the race. He also dared Democrats to try to challenge him. And on top of that, he sent a defiant letter to congressional Democrats basically saying, I'm staying in the race. Deal with it. So he's digging in. And as he digs in, things keep getting worse for him, both in terms of polling data and confidence from his own base and party. And with regard to the latter issue, answers like this are part of the problem. How can you assure the American people that you won't have another night like the one you did in Atlanta? Look at my career. I've not had many of those nights. Checkmate bedwetters. See, when he was younger and not in cognitive decline, he didn't have bad nights like that. So it's definitely not going to happen again, because as we all know, aging definitely doesn't just go in one direction. You know, sometimes you uh, wake up and you're 18 years old. Other times you wake up and you're 150. It's just amazing, isn't it? So we're reaching the point where he's just denying reality, not just with regard to his condition, but his status in this race. And I say this because during his interview, he's not admitting that the debate harmed him. The idea that Donald Trump is, uh, has gained in any substantial way as his, his argument to why he should be president is anywhere convincing than it was uh, two weeks or three weeks ago. It's just not there. Now, his delusional comments there aren't necessarily surprising because he said the same thing in his interview on ABC News with George Stephanopoulos on Friday evening. Let me challenge you sure. because you were close but behind going into the debate. Um, you're further behind now by, by any measure. It's been a two man race for several months. Inflation has come down in those last few months. He's become a convicted felon. Yet you're still falling further behind. You guys keep saying that. George, do you, look, you know polling better than anybody. Do you think polling data is accurate as it used to be? I don't think so, but I think when you look at all of the polling data right now, it shows that he's certainly ahead in the popular vote, probably even more ahead in the battleground states. And one of the other key factors there is it shows that in many of the battleground states, the Democrats who are running for Senate in the House are doing better than you are. Well, that's not unusual in some states. I carried an awful lot of Democrats last time I ran in 2020. Look, I remember them telling me the same thing in 2020. I can't win. The poll show, I can't win. Remember 2024, 2020, the red wave was coming. Before the vote, I said, that's not going to happen. We're going to win. We did better in an off year than almost any incumbent president ever has done. They said in 2023, all the tough races, we're not going to win. I went into all those areas, all those all those districts, and we won. He just seems like a stubborn old man. Now, part of the problem is that his biggest boosters are now parroting his poll denial, although they do tend to share the polls that are more favorable to him. And to be clear, when I say favorable, I mean, they still show him losing, albeit to a lesser extent. Now, here's the thing. Polling isn't everything, and it can under or overestimate candidates. That's happened. It's not a perfect science, right? But it is still a valid indication of where the race is. And aggregate polling data paints a very clear picture. Joe Biden is losing. And rather than admitting that, he is denying reality. And Biden bros are now parroting what he's saying, which is pretty dangerous because I thought that the Democratic Party was against political cults, but here we are. Now, here's a reality check. He's not doing well. In fact, to put things in a perspective, he's losing in every single swing state in polling averages. And with the exception of Wisconsin and Michigan, he's losing by quite a bit. Now, this is in spite of the fact that he's been outspending Trump when it comes to ad spending by a massive amount. Now, Trump is barely even campaigning and he's still decimating Biden, which shows you how bad he's doing. Now, to make matters worse, a new poll just dropped by Emerson, which is a very reliable pollster, confirming yet again that he is getting crushed in swing states. But this is only a problem if you accept reality. And lucky for Biden, he is not doing that. He's rejecting reality because it makes him feel better. Now, CNN pollster Harry Anton debunked Biden's reasoning for doubting polls because he argues, you know, that he was underestimated. That's what he said with George Stephanopoulos. But that's just not true. I just want to point out where the polls are now, where they were at this point back in 2020, and Joe Biden's worst position in the polls back in 2020. Right now, Donald Trump leads in an aggregate of national polls by about three percentage points. If you go back four years ago at this point, Joe Biden was ahead by nine points. This right now don't look anything like 
what we saw four years ago at this point. I then decided to take it a step further. What was Biden's worst 2020 polling position? He was ahead by four points, which basically matched what he ended up beating Donald Trump by in the national popular vote. So this three point advantage for Donald Trump is Donald Trump's best position versus Joe Biden, whether you include the polls this year or you include the polls last cycle. The idea that the polls underestimated Joe Biden last time around, simply put, does not hold any water, Mr. Berman. Not in the general election, certainly. What about uh, in terms of being underestimated in the Trump era in general? Yeah, so I decided to expand upon our search. Who outperformed their July national polls? This is major elections during the Trump era. We can start in the midterms, right? Take a look here. This is a 2022 midterm. Wow. This is a gen generic congressional ballot. In fact, Republicans were underestimated by a point. They outperformed their July polls and the actual result by a percentage point. You go back to 2018, Democrats did outperform their polls, but just by a point. Basically, the polls were right on at this particular point in the midterm elections. We talk about the presidential race. Last time around, Donald Trump actually did better in the results than his July polls by five points. You go back to 2016, you see something very similar. That is, the July polls actually underestimated Donald Trump. He outperformed his July polls. So the idea in the Trump era that the polls have underestimated Democrats, whether it be in a Joe Biden matchup, whether it be a matchup against Hillary Clinton, whether it be in the midterms, at least in the national polling that right now shows Donald Trump in his strongest position, simply put, is not true. If anything, the polls have underestimated Republicans during the Trump era, especially in the presidential races in 2016 and in 2020. Well, on that front, I mean, how unusual is it for a Republican to be ahead by this much right now? Yeah, so let's go all the way back. Who led in early July polls? Well, right now, Donald Trump is ahead. Go back in 2020, a Democrat, Biden. 2016, Hillary Clinton, a Democrat. 2008, 2012, a Democrat. Even in 2004, where George W. Bush ended up winning, John Kerry was actually in the, ahead in the polls at this point. You have to go all the way back to 2000, to George W. Bush being ahead in the early July polls. You have to go all the way back to the end of the 20th century, beginning of the 21st century, to find a Republican ahead at this point, 24 years. At this particular point, the idea that a Democrat is ahead, there are voters in the electorate who are dealing with a poll position they have never seen before, and that is a Republican leading in the national popular vote, at least according to the a polls. A very unusual situation. So he is uniquely weak in this election and refuses to admit it. But here's what he said on Friday when he was asked about the prospect of him losing. And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. There you have it. As long as he did the goodest job, that's all that matters. Cool. Democracy is on the line and Project 2025 is right around the corner. But at least we all know that Biden thought that he did the goodest job to stop it. Thank you, Biden. You know, it's easy for him to say that because he has nothing to lose except for the election. But I mean, as an individual, he'll be fine. He's not going to lose bodily autonomy any further or marriage rights. He doesn't have a trans child. He's not an immigrant. So if he loses, he'll be fine. He'll fuck off and live in his mansion in peace until he dies. But the rest of us, we're going to have to deal with the ramifications of a second Trump term for the rest of our lives, despite how good of a job he thinks that he did. So it's really a fucked up thing for him to say. And when he was asked about this on Morning Joe, he laughed about it. I'm not making this up. The, the, the topic came up of the Stephanopoulos interview where you were asked the question, mm. uh, how would you feel if Donald Trump beat you? How would you feel after you lost? And you said, well, as long as I did the best I could do, uh, that's the that's the most important thing that's caused Democrats concern who believe <laughs> that, that losing is not an option. What would you say to those who are concerned by that answer? It's not an option. And I've not lost. I haven't lost. I beat him last time. I'll beat him this time. And this is a guy who, look, we talk about debate. Look at his performance with debate. Incredible. Just incredible. Trump's performance at the debate was bad. I agree with him. But the problem is that Biden's cognitive decline overshadowed Trump's lies. The fact that Biden was not capable of fact checking Donald Trump speaks to his weakness as a candidate. But, you know, don't worry, everyone, because he says he's going to win. So I guess we all just have to shut the fuck up and believe him, even though all the evidence says otherwise. This is such a frustrating situation. Like we're dealing with somebody who is not 
in the same plane of existence as us. Uh, I say that both literally and, you know, metaphorically speaking, because he's in cognitive decline, so he's not with it like he was previously. But on top of that, you know, he's just denying everything that we can see with our own eyes. His performance, polls, it's just so frustrating. But thankfully, some Democrats aren't willing to just accept our fate and accept another Trump term. And there's been little inklings here and there that Democrats are rallying together to try to compel him to drop out. Mark Warner, for example, was reportedly concocting a plan with other senators to do just that. But to get ahead of this effort, Biden released a lengthy letter to them, which reads, quote, I wouldn't be running again if I did not absolutely believe I was the best person to beat Donald Trump in 2024. We had a Democratic nomination process and the voters have spoken clearly and decisively. I received over 14 million votes, 87 percent of the votes cast across the entire nominating process. I have nearly 3,900 delegates, making me the presumptive nominee of our party by a wide margin. This was a process open to anyone who wanted to run. Only three people chose to challenge me. One fared so badly that he left the primaries to run as an independent. Another attacked me for being too old and was soundly defeated. The voters of the Democratic Party have voted. They have chosen me to be the nominee of the party. Do we now just say this process didn't matter? That the voters don't have a say? Now he concludes on the second page by saying it's time for this talk of him dropping out to end and adds, quote, any weakening of resolve or lack of clarity about the task ahead only helps Trump and hurts us. So basically, if you point out the fact that he's uniquely weak to Donald Trump, you're helping Donald Trump. It's not Joe Biden who's helping Donald Trump by stubbornly staying in the race, even though his own party is calling on him to drop out. It's everyone else who's saying, hey, maybe you should drop out so we can beat Donald Trump. Now, it's incredible that he had the audacity to cite the so-called primary when what we got in 2024 was not a real primary. There were no debates, and some states outright just canceled primaries like Florida. So no, there wasn't a democratic process, and to the extent that there was, hundreds of thousands of voters still across multiple states, ones that actually had primaries, they voted uncommitted specifically to let you know that they disapprove of you. Prior to that, there were polls showing that Democrats were discontent with Biden and they didn't want him to run again. But there wasn't a primary, so we didn't really have a choice. So no, you don't get to play the democracy card here in the absence of a real primary process. But the message here to Democratic electeds is clear. If you come for me, you're going to war with the Democratic Party base as well, which is not something that Democratic politicians want to do. Now, unfortunately, it does seem like this letter worked because Axios is reporting that Mark Warner's Monday meeting was actually called off. Now, they don't necessarily say that the meeting was canceled because of this letter. They say that, you know, senators don't feel like they'll have the confidentiality to speak without what they say getting leaked. But, you know, the entire Senate Democratic Caucus is going to be tomorrow. So we'll see if they discuss this or whatnot. The time, though, of this news, it's, you know, it's pretty conspicuous if you ask me. It kind of feels like Mark Warner is standing down after Biden told him to stand down. Not directly, but still, I mean, I think that that letter in part was directed at people that Mark Warner was trying to appeal to in the Senate. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is uh, Biden's interview with Morning Joe uh, had a moment where he was asked about media outlets, donors, and Democratic Party officials publicly calling on him to drop out. And I want to play his message to them. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites. Now, I'm not talking about you guys, but about the elites in the party who they know so much more. But any of these guys yeah. don't think I should let them run against me. Go ahead, announce the announce president. Challenge me at the convention. So he's talking a big game. He's daring Democrats to try to contest his convention, and he's railing against elites. Now, in a different context, I think that would be a great line if it wasn't complete horseshit. Fine, Biden, you want to take on elites? You're all of a sudden Mr. Pro-Populist? Declare your support for Medicare for all right now. Shun all of your donors in the healthcare industry and let them know who's in charge. Support Medicare for all. Stick it to the elites in the defense industry by calling for an immediate withdrawal of IDF forces in Gaza. Right now, do that. You know, Boeing isn't going to be too happy about that. All these defense contractors that fund your campaign, they're not going to be too happy about that. But at least you're sticking it to the donors and, you know, you're, you're letting them know who's in charge. He's not going to do that. 
Biden is all bark and no bite. In fact, after railing against elites, guess what he did? He took questions from donors on a phone call. He is so full of shit. And it's insulting that he'll pretend to be against elites and for the people who democratically elected him. Yet he'll hold private meetings with elites, but not town halls or press conferences. OK, if you're for the people and you're so populist, why aren't you with them right now? Take some questions. Do a town hall. But here's the thing. We don't really have to say anything in the matter because we can talk until we're blue in the face. Our words mean nothing because this decision is Biden's decision to make alone. The only influence that external factors have is they can put pressure on on him if they're in a pretty powerful position. But just in terms of like us as as people, we can't say shit. We have no say in the matter. If he wants to stay in and lose to Trump, we can't do shit about that. It's it's really frustrating. So unless elected Democrats come together and they're brave enough to put their necks on the line to call on him, uh, call on him to drop out, he's not going to go anywhere. Now, he's feeling the heat, but the question is, will it be enough to get him to drop out? And so far, doesn't seem like there's any indication of that. But if he doesn't drop out, that's going to be too bad because that means that a Trump victory is going to be very likely. Now, I hope I'm wrong and I hope he's right that he really can beat Donald Trump if that's the case, but it's not looking too good. And I think that people should prepare for the worst, but hope for the best.